how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Isaiah 14 verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven the story of Lucifer. Greetings, celestial seekers. Today, we are diving deep into the story of Lucifer, one of the most misunderstood figures in religious history. From this verse in Isaiah, we begin to unravel the mystery surrounding his fall from grace. But was this passage truly talking about a fallen angel, or could it have referred to a powerful human ruler, like a Babylonian king? The symbolism of morning star or lightbringer adds another layer of intrigue. How did such a radiant figure become linked with the ultimate adversary? Let's start by exploring the name Lucifer. In Latin, it simply means lightbringer, a reference to Venus, the planet that shines brightly just before dawn. Lucifer, in the original sense, was not inherently evil. So, how did this title for the morning star come to represent a being synonymous with Satan? The answer is complex, and as we peel back the layers of history, we'll see that Lucifer's transformation into a symbol of rebellion was a gradual shift, influenced by many ancient myths. Lucifer's story is one of pride, beauty, and tragic downfall. According to some traditions, he was an angel who defied God, refusing to bow or serve in the way he was commanded. But is this all there is to the story? What if Lucifer wasn't just rebelling out of spite, but was seeking knowledge, autonomy, or something even greater? Some parallels can be drawn to other ancient myths, like the story of Prometheus from Greek mythology. Prometheus, too, brought light, or in his case, fire, to humanity, defying the gods and suffering punishment. Could Lucifer's tale be linked to this archetype of the Lightbringer, a figure who defies authority for a higher purpose? And if so, what does that say about his true role? As we journey through this story together, let's reflect on these questions. Was Lucifer's act truly a rebellion, or was it a search for freedom and enlightenment? And how did his story come to influence so much of our understanding of good and evil? Let's discuss in the comments, what do you think Lucifer represents? Now, before we move further, I want to encourage you all to explore other videos on Celestial Chronicles, where we delve into similar mythological and religious topics. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, share this video, and join us on this journey to uncover the hidden meanings in the stories that shape our world. Satan, the Adversary and Accuser In the ancient Hebrew texts, Satan wasn't always the embodiment of evil. In fact, the word Satan comes from the Hebrew word Satan, which means adversary or accuser. Originally, Satan wasn't a name for a specific being but a title for anyone acting as an opponent or challenger. One of the earliest and most important mentions of Satan comes from the Book of Job. In this story, Satan isn't the ruler of an evil realm, instead, he works alongside God, almost like a divine prosecutor. He questions Job's faithfulness and asks for permission to test him. Rather than tempting Job directly, Satan brings suffering upon him to see whether Job will remain loyal to God even when everything he loves is taken away. This version of Satan is very different from the figure we often imagine today. He's not a rebellious fallen angel but rather a being whose role is to test the faith and integrity of humans. In some ways, Satan here is more like a cosmic auditor, making sure that people's devotion to God is genuine. So, how did Satan evolve from this role into the devil we think of today? The shift begins in the later parts of the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. Here, Satan becomes more of a tempter and deceiver, actively working against God's plan. For example, during Jesus' time in the wilderness, Satan offers Jesus power over all the kingdoms of the world in exchange for his worship. In this version, Satan takes on the role of a seducer, tempting individuals to stray from righteousness. But even in the New Testament, Satan doesn't force anyone to sin. Instead, he presents options, showing the power of human free will. Is this what makes him so dangerous, our ability to choose wrong? His role seems to highlight that temptation and opposition are part of the human experience. Without Satan, would people truly be free to make choices, or would they simply follow God without question? This also brings up an interesting question about Satan's necessity in religious narratives. If he is the adversary, doesn't his existence serve a purpose in God's larger plan? Could Satan be necessary for humanity's growth, serving as a way for people to prove their faith through challenges? It's fascinating to think about how Satan's role shifted over time, transforming from a figure who works with God to one who seems to work against him. And even more interesting, how does this change our understanding of good, evil, and the choices we make in life? Does Satan represent pure evil, or does he symbolize the challenges we all face in staying true to our beliefs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think Satan's true role is? Is he an essential part of human free will, or simply the embodiment of evil? Let's keep this conversation going, celestial seekers. Iblis, the defiant jinn of Islamic tradition. In Islamic tradition, Iblis holds a unique and important role, 
different from how Satan is viewed in Christianity or Judaism. According to the Quran, Iblis was not an angel but a jinn, a being made from smokeless fire. The Quran tells the story of how God created Adam and commanded all the angels and jinn to bow to him as a sign of respect. While the angels obeyed, Iblis refused. His reason? He believed that, as a being of fire, he was superior to Adam, who was made of clay. This act of defiance led to Iblis being cast out of heaven, but he wasn't cast out for rebelling against God's rule in the same way Lucifer was in Christian tradition. Instead, Iblis' refusal was seen as an act of pride and arrogance. He wasn't rejecting the existence or authority of God, he was questioning God's decision to honor a human made of clay. In response, God cursed Iblis and cast him out, but Iblis was granted one request before his exile, the ability to tempt humans until the day of judgment. Iblis' role, then, is similar to Satan's in Christianity, he becomes the tempter, the one who whispers in the ears of humanity, leading them away from the straight path. But what makes Iblis particularly interesting is his complex relationship with God. Even though he defied God's command, he still acknowledges God's power and authority. He doesn't seek to overthrow God but instead asks for the opportunity to prove that humans are weak and easily led astray. Another fascinating aspect of Iblis' story is that, in Islamic tradition, he is sometimes referred to by the name Azazil before his fall, a name that suggests he was once a righteous being who lived among the angels. Some Islamic scholars describe Azazil as a highly devout worshipper of God, which makes his fall from grace even more tragic. His story echoes themes found in many other religious traditions, pride comes before the fall, and even the most devout can lose their way. Iblis, as a figure of temptation, plays a crucial role in the spiritual journey of humans. His mission is not to force people into sin but to present them with the choice to disobey God's commands. In Islamic teachings, every human has the ability to resist Iblis' temptations through faith and righteous actions. In this way, Iblis acts as a test, his presence in the world allows people to demonstrate their loyalty and commitment to God's will. What's also interesting is that Islamic tradition holds that Iblis will ultimately be defeated. His time on earth is limited to testing humanity, and on the day of judgment, he will be held accountable for his actions. However, it's important to note that humans, too, are responsible for their choices, while Iblis may tempt, he cannot force anyone to sin. The ultimate responsibility lies with the individual, which brings up the question, is Iblis just a tempter, or is he also a reflection of our own inner struggles? Lastly, there's the Greek connection to consider. Some scholars believe that the name Iblis might have come from the Greek word diabolos, meaning slanderer or accuser, this suggests that the figure of Iblis may have been influenced by older mythologies and cultures. Could it be that the story of Iblis, like the stories of Lucifer or Satan, reflects a broader, more universal theme of temptation and the struggle between pride and obedience? What do you think, celestial seekers? Is Iblis a villain, or is he simply fulfilling a necessary role in the spiritual journey of humanity? How does his story compare to that of Satan or Lucifer in other traditions? Let's talk about it in the comments, and feel free to share your thoughts on how temptation and free will shape our understanding of good and evil. The Serpent in the Garden, The Origin of Temptation One of the most well-known stories of temptation in religious history is found in the Garden of Eden, where a serpent convinces Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. Many people believe that this serpent is Satan in disguise, but the text in the book of Genesis never explicitly calls the serpent Satan. Instead, the serpent is described as cunning, subtle, and persuasive. It doesn't force Eve to eat the fruit, rather, it presents her with a choice. It offers her the idea that eating the fruit would give her wisdom, the knowledge of good and evil. This brings us to one of the most important questions, did the serpent really bring evil into the world, or did it simply open the door to knowledge? The tree in the story is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Before eating the fruit, Adam and Eve were innocent, they didn't even realize they were naked. But after eating it, their eyes were opened, and they gained awareness. Was this awareness a curse or a gift? The serpent says that by eating the fruit, Adam and Eve would be like God, knowing good and evil. Was the serpent offering enlightenment, or was it leading humanity down a path of destruction? Over time, many interpretations have linked the serpent to Satan, but this connection is mostly a later development, influenced by Christian theology. Early Jewish interpretations didn't necessarily see the serpent as the devil but rather as a symbol of temptation and the human desire for knowledge. The story of the serpent is more than just about disobedience, it's about curiosity, choice, and the consequences of seeking forbidden knowledge. This raises an interesting point, was the fall of man truly a fall, or was it an awakening to something deeper, something more complex? Another fascinating element to consider is the role of free will in this story. God placed the tree of knowledge in the garden and allowed the serpent to tempt Adam and Eve. Why would God give them the option to disobey if he didn't want them to? 
This could suggest that free will was a central part of the story, that Adam and Eve needed to have the ability to choose, even if that choice meant disobedience. The serpent's role in the garden is a bit of a mystery. It doesn't seem to act out of malice, but rather out of a desire to make Adam and Eve aware of their potential. The serpent doesn't directly say that God is lying, but it does challenge God's warning. It's as if the serpent is offering a different perspective, saying, are you sure you understand what God means? Maybe there's more to the story than you think. In many ways, the serpent's temptation mirrors the human struggle with curiosity and the unknown. How often are we faced with choices where the right path isn't always clear? The serpent doesn't make Eve's decision for her, it simply offers her an alternative view. This invites us to reflect on how temptation works in our own lives. It's not always about being forced into wrong choices, but about being offered possibilities that test our judgment. This story also ties into the larger question of how temptation works in religious narratives. If humans were never given the opportunity to disobey, could they truly be free? Could there be faith without the possibility of doubt? The serpent's role, then, becomes essential to the human experience, representing the complexities of choice, knowledge, and the consequences that come with them. So, what do you think? Was the serpent in the Garden of Eden a force for evil, or was it a catalyst for human awareness and growth? Does this story reflect the dangers of temptation, or does it highlight the importance of free will and the pursuit of knowledge? Let's discuss these ideas further in the comments. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, celestial seekers. The power of free will, a shared theme. One of the central ideas connecting the stories of Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis is the concept of free will. Each of these figures chose to act against divine command, exercising their ability to make independent decisions. This idea of free will is not just about rebellion, it's about choice, responsibility, and the consequences that follow. In every narrative, we see these characters face a decision, and the decisions they make shape their destinies, much like human beings in the real world. Satan, as he appears in the Christian and Jewish traditions, was once a high-ranking being, often thought to be an angel, who chose to go against God. His story is often seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of pride and ambition. Lucifer, often identified with Satan, is said to have fallen because he could not accept that he was not equal to God. His choice to rebel was rooted in his desire for more power, more autonomy. And while his rebellion was a significant act of defiance, it was also a choice, a use of the free will that God had given him. In the Islamic tradition, Iblis also demonstrates the power of choice. When God created Adam and commanded all the angels and jinn to bow to him, Iblis refused. He chose not to obey because he believed he was superior, being made of fire while Adam was made of clay. For Iblis, the decision wasn't just about disobedience, it was about his pride, his belief that he deserved a higher status than Adam. This act of defiance set him apart from the other jinn and angels and led to his exile from heaven. But, like Satan and Lucifer, Iblis' decision was a deliberate one, rooted in his free will. These stories bring up important questions about the nature of free will and its role in the divine plan. If beings like Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis were given the ability to choose, knowing they might disobey, does that mean their rebellion was part of a greater purpose? Could their acts of defiance be necessary to the larger narrative of good versus evil? Without the presence of temptation and opposition, how could humans, or even these celestial beings, prove their loyalty or faith? Free will, in these stories, seems to be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it allows for autonomy and individual decision-making. On the other, it opens the door to disobedience and sin. The choices made by Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis reflect this complexity. They had the freedom to choose, but with that freedom came the potential for great consequences. Their decisions led to their downfall, but in a broader sense, their actions also shaped the stories of humanity, serving as tests or challenges that humans must face in their own lives. For humans, these figures represent the struggle of choice and the weight of responsibility that comes with it. Just as Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness and Iblis tempts humanity in the Quran, we are faced with choices every day that test our character, our faith, and our moral compass. Temptation isn't just about external forces trying to lead us astray, it's also about the internal conflict we feel when faced with difficult decisions. Free will means we have the power to make choices, but it also means we must live with the outcomes of those choices. In many religious teachings, the presence of these tempters is seen as necessary. Without the opportunity to choose wrong, there would be no true test of faith or virtue. If humans were simply programmed to always obey, there would be no need for free will, no growth, no spiritual development. The challenges presented by figures like Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis force humans to actively choose the path of righteousness, rather than passively follow it. But does this mean these figures are evil, or are they simply fulfilling their role in the divine plan? 
Are they truly villains, or do they serve a purpose that allows humanity to grow, learn, and ultimately choose good? These are questions that have been debated for centuries, and they continue to be relevant today as we think about the role of free will in our own lives. So, what do you think? Do Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis represent evil, or are they simply playing their part in a larger story about human choice and responsibility? How do their stories help us understand the importance of free will and the consequences of our decisions? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, celestial seekers, and let's explore these ideas together. The Legacy of Rebellion, Lessons from Ancient Myths The stories of Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis are not confined to just religious texts, their themes of rebellion, temptation, and the quest for knowledge echo throughout ancient myths and legends across various cultures. These figures have evolved beyond their original roles and taken on broader meanings in literature, art, and even modern philosophy. Rebellion, as a concept, has fascinated humanity for centuries. Whether it's the defiance of gods or rulers, the idea of challenging authority resonates deeply with us. But what lessons can we learn from these rebellious figures? Are they simply villains, or do they represent something more fundamental about the human experience? Let's start with Lucifer. As we discussed, the name Lucifer means Lightbringer, which originally referred to the morning star, the planet Venus. In Roman mythology, Lucifer wasn't seen as evil but was associated with enlightenment and the dawn. It was only later, through Christian reinterpretation, that Lucifer became synonymous with the devil. But this idea of the Lightbringer is found in other myths as well. In Greek mythology, Prometheus defied Zeus by stealing fire and giving it to humanity, granting them knowledge and civilization. For this act of rebellion, Prometheus was punished, much like Lucifer was cast out of heaven for challenging divine authority. The story of Prometheus highlights a common thread in these tales of rebellion, the pursuit of knowledge, even at great cost. Prometheus, like Lucifer, is not a purely evil figure. In fact, he is often seen as a hero, someone who sacrificed himself for the betterment of humanity. Could Lucifer's story be seen in a similar light? Is it possible that his rebellion wasn't simply about pride but about seeking a deeper understanding, perhaps even a desire to bring something valuable to others? While traditional interpretations paint Lucifer as the villain, these myths suggest a more nuanced view, where rebellion can be both destructive and transformative. Iblis, too, shares elements of this rebellious legacy. His refusal to bow to Adam was based on his belief that he was superior, having been created from fire, while Adam was made from clay. This act of defiance resulted in Iblis being cast out, but his story isn't just about disobedience. In Islamic tradition, Iblis represents the struggle of pride and the consequences of resisting divine will. Like Lucifer and Prometheus, Iblis challenges the established order, but his punishment serves as a warning about the dangers of letting pride and ego dictate our choices. These ancient stories reflect something deeper about the human condition. The desire to question authority, to push the boundaries of what is allowed, is a part of who we are. Rebellion, in many of these tales, is not simply about destruction, it is about growth, change, and the pursuit of knowledge. The consequences are often severe, as seen in the punishments of Prometheus, Lucifer, and Iblis, but they also bring about new understanding and transformation. In modern times, figures like Lucifer have taken on new meanings. In literature, particularly in works like Milton's Paradise Lost, Lucifer is portrayed as a tragic hero, someone who, despite his flaws, fights for what he believes in. This version of Lucifer resonates with people because it reflects our own struggles with authority, freedom, and the desire for self-determination. We admire those who challenge the status quo, even if their actions lead to their downfall. So, what does this legacy of rebellion teach us? Perhaps it shows us that questioning authority and seeking knowledge are essential parts of human progress, but they come with risks. Rebellion is a double-edged sword, it can lead to growth and enlightenment, but it can also result in destruction and loss. The stories of Satan, Lucifer, and Iblis remind us that the choices we make, especially when it comes to defiance and pride, carry significant consequences. What do you think, celestial seekers? Do these figures represent evil, or are they symbols of something deeper, something more human? Let's continue the discussion in the comments.